We arrived at the Dudley Canal Trust a little bit early, so we enjoyed a cup of coffee at the coffee bar while the previous tavern cruise was disembarking. But we were soon on our way. Ted, what? Well, look at that. Hey, never looks like it's going to fit from up there. Well, no, no, no. Never that. looks like it's going to fit. <laughs> they put all the white paint on to make sure I got the right one. Yeah. So, yeah, oh, welcome to the Dudley Tunnel. You know why they call it the Dudley Tunnel? Well, it's in Dudley. It's a tunnel and it's in Dudley. Yeah. <laughs> this man is so entertaining that I'm going to leave the vast majority of the commentating of these crews to him. The tunnel wasn't good until 1779. Yeah, bloody mine. I'll let you guess why they call it bloody mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to fill the old lorry. Yeah. The tunnel in front of us is the one that hopefully will come out of it. We know the cost. That's still the water running out of it there. Yeah. Beyond us here, that tunnel goes back 20 foot. There's a shaft at the back of there. There's Tipton Mine is 85 kilometers. Yeah. Tipton Mine was the only one that's cold and limestone. Yeah, and they go back and grab it off. Mm. All the white stuff here, don't it? So it's washed through from the rock on the outside. This is why you have Calvin on your washing machines, you see? Yeah. It also up there with some little start toys. They're unusual, they're actually straw. The water runs down the centre. Now the method of digging the tunnels, they marked a line on the surface and then some shafts down. Hang two plumb bobs into the bottom of that shaft. Right. And that was how they told us at the bottom which way they dig. And then they dug away from each other to join them all together. Yeah. So there's no laser technology, so there's a few kinks in it. Yeah. It comes as something of a surprise when the tunnel is converted into a lecture theatre. <laughs> We get psychedelic lights accompanied by psychedelic music. I reckon the acoustics are really good. Uh, as you can see, we've still taken down all the decorations for the Alice in Wonderland thing. These there used to be loads of kids and folks coming down here exploring them. And there was a couple of lads doing potholing. And one of them thought, right, it'd be great if everybody got together. And he left a message in a bottle. Basically saying, if you're interested in these mines and tunnels as I am, let's all meet up the gypsy. Those explosions you heard will be explained in a few minutes' time. This is Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And that was the start of the Canal and Tunnel Trust. This was the first expansion on the canals in 120 years. A little bit of daylight. We call it the well, we wouldn't want to drink the water. So this is Hurst Cavern. This is the last working cavern on this side of the mines. 1924 this was last used. You knock the iron bar on the rock and you twist it. No power tools, no airlines or nothing. Yeah? Twist the iron bar, get it as far as you can. Put in the cheapest gun down you can buy. Put a homemade fuse on the end of that. Yeah? Then all these men climb out the cabin. They take a brew and get the snap and climb out the cabin and leave in here the youngest child they could find. So pre-1840 that would have been a nine-year-old boy. You have a nine-year-old boy with a candle, cheap gunpowder and homemade cheeses. And what else can go wrong, eh? Well, limestone changes its density within feet, so you never knew how much was actually going to come on down on the floor. But on top of that, the little one stayed in the cabin. Because if the fuse went out, he'd got to run out and relight it. So, now they weren't picking on him. These guys had got ten years of lime dust in the lungs. They couldn't and run anywhere. Us. They couldn't breathe. He was small, he was nimble, he could hide under a trolley. Yeah, Yeah, it was really dangerous. One in seven of those kids were killed. Really? Yeah. The main reason the uh, life expectancy was only 27 was the child mortality. He was small, he was nimble, he could hide under a trolley. Yeah. And he could run out, he could nip out and relight the fuse. Blindness was a major issue because a lion. Yeah. So, not a pleasant place to work. And then at nine, you're left in here on your own. Let's see if he survives this one, eh? 
Yeah, one of our other skippers said that looks like school custard. Oh, right above your head now. Yeah. Oh, I think it looks like the cabin's gone out of yourself. Oh, yeah. Which is quite. Uh, oh, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's why we call it the Eiffel Tower. Because if you've got a full boat, at least half of them get a bit on Eiffel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the light's going to go on now so you can have a look round. There you go, above your head, look solid rock. No need to support that. This brickwork on the walls, this is 30s, 40s, protecting all the stuff behind. But as we go back, look at this arch over the top of your head now. We're back into the 1700s now. In this period of history, everybody worked. So Dad's down the mines, he's got the nine-year-old boys with him, and he's got the girls from the age of about 12 until they had the first child. Up on the surface, Mum's in the brickyard, and she's got all the toddlers, right? And even five-year-olds had to make bricks. So when they were surveying this arch, they found little toddlers' fingerprints and little drawings and hearts that the kids had done really? and set down to that. So originally the canal came in behind us and bared off to the left and went down there behind those two boats. That was the original way into Dark Cavern and the test. So all this was dug out over the top of a working canal in the late 1850s. 1750s, sorry, yeah? Right? Then 1780 something, something like that, yeah? They dug all this out over the top of the working canal and rebuilt a lot. And they've taken all them arches down to the existing arches and joined it all together. I think it's incredible. <laughs> the two boats down there, two of our working boats, the little one, that they call that one the Flying Scotsman. Yeah, it's got that many names. Yeah. Yeah. But it's legging game, two of you at the age of 14 on an empty boat, lying on a plank in the middle, with your feet up there, yeah. all your hips on and run down the walls. Yeah. And you'd be running. You've got, you'd have three and a half hours to do 1.9 miles. Not, that's not too bad, you think. But you've got to be fast enough to drift through the wide bits where you can't reach just the sides. Yeah. Because if you stopped in them, you've either got to get in and push. Yeah? yeah. Right? So, so they'd be hurtling down here. Once they've got right? momentum, yeah. keep Once you get momentum. Yeah. And then, of course, at the end, they've got to run all up over the top of the town centre to go to the other end to do it again. Because they're on six, 12 hour shifts. Right? When they get good at it, they put 30 ton of cargo in a boat. And that'll put the boat down to about there. Right? Um, and they'd be hurtling down these walls. Yeah, money would go up, time didn't change, time was everything. Yeah? Some of the teams would tie up to three boats together and they'd be running down these walls. Now, one man called Jack Wheeler used to do it on his own. Oh, he saw it, So he had to line in the middle of the roof or pile of cargo up. Yeah, hands and knees on the roof. And he'd do it in three hours. Right? Now in the mid 1900s, for six 12 hour shifts, Jack was earning seven pounds a week. Yeah? Yeah. Now, you've not made money in them days. Good money. Yeah, good, yeah. good money in them days. But the best thing about Jack is he was still doing it when he was 76. Yeah, I would see that. Yeah. Well, you are, he's by counting the beach, you can't touch the wall. Yeah? So it's the only way, because it's pitch black. Because even if you could have afforded a candle, the wind would blow it out. So, yeah, didn't bother. Flying down here. This here, daylight now, up until very, very early 1800s, this was a cavern. This was Castle Mill Cavern. You'd come flying out of this entrance, having to go as fast as you could to drift all the way across it. But out here was absolute chaos. There's a mine with boats leaving it. There's a mine there with boats leaving it. And there's boats coming out of the Wren's Nest Tunnel as fast as you're coming out of there. They're coming from everywhere. Yeah, it was absolute mayhem. It was that bad out here the Earl of Dudley actually put his hand in his own pocket to do something about it. He bought a lantern. He didn't put a candle in it, he only bought the lantern. And up over the back of Ted's shoulder up there, as we go back, you'll see a light up there. It's been a light burning there for the best part of 200 years. But now it's imagination time. Yeah, got a good imagination? <laughs> Try this one then, okay. So, so we're floating around in a shallow tropical sea. Lovely, eh? Glass of, yeah? Yeah. Nice little bit of glass or something, take the edge off. Be marvellous. Right. Tell you what, let's go roasting up. Let's go down by Brazil. Yeah? So we're floating around, shallow tropical sea by Brazil. There's the odd bit though, we've got to go back 428 million years. Because that's where Dudley was. Dudley was a shallow tropical sea by Brazil. That sea bed is there. That wall there. We're going to swap this torch so we get back to it. It's gone deep. That 428 million years ago, that wall was a seabed by Brazil. Nothing more, Ted, please, mate. Yeah. So, 
In there, there's over 500 different fossils. 70 types of them can only be found in Dublin. Hence, really? hence the Dudley book. And, and he was on the coat of arms. So we got that. That's not. A, that's an IKEA wardrobe there from Wednesday, not. But right in front of it there, that little thing looks a bit like a Dorito. Oh yeah. 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 Every lump and bump there, they're all they're big domes, every one of them. That one there, look, on the end. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. That all fossils. See, limestone is mud and sea creatures, so there's nothing else to give you any shape. Yeah. There's a blasting hole there. There's one of the blasting holes. The black line here, that's the coral reef. Go on with it. And as we go back, one of the other spots. There's tracks to get out of each mine. Kids have been pushing carts weighing about a ton, tipping them in the boats. But you can't tip that much weight in the middle of a wooden boat breaking. So behind us is two bricks of arches there, one on each side. Yeah? yeah. And a big arch there. I bet they can shuffle the boat. A couple loads of front put to the back. And there'd have been a 13 year old in charge of that. Now as we come back in here, I look at these square holes in the wall. Um, 1850s company records show 41,700 votes in the history. So we are a trust, we're totally separate from the museum. We were actually here 15 years before the museum was even done. Great, so it's uh, been a pleasure taking you around folks. Thanks for coming and seeing us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. You've done a good job. Thank you. You do what I can. <laughs> and we return to the Dudley Trust after one and three quarter hours of canal boat pleasure.